They'll wear a skirt, but maybe have a beard. Or they'll I, mix and match that in whatever way Neil, you want. Sorry, hold on, sorry. hold on. I'm not, wait, wait, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So. Okay. They see an unfair playing field, metaphorically and literally speaking. So fix the playing field, damn it. In this video, we are going to watch the lads from Trigonometry take on Neil deGrasse Tyson surrounding the trans debate. And somebody needed to do this because this guy has let his fame and status as an arbiter of truth and science get to his head and morph into a full-blown god complex, as we're about to see. So let's watch the moment where Neil mounts his high horse and begins to explain to us filthy unwashed peasants how uninformed we truly are. One of your functions over time has been to communicate scientific knowledge to the public. Yeah. And that's why I was quite surprised to hear you talk about the idea that we all exist on a spectrum where you wake up one day and you feel like you're more female and more male. Apparently, the XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. Mm, yes. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm going to I'm going to put on makeup. I'm going to do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. Why do you care? Yeah. What 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 business it is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? I would claim that for many people strongly held opinions or views, that when they become more fully informed, that the strength with which they were holding those views tends to fade or evaporate entirely. And these are cosmic perspectives that bring your view above all that divides us. This, this is the power of a cosmic perspective. In most humans, high 90% humans, you're either XX or XY, okay, chromosomes. Let's ask ourselves some questions. When you see another human being, do you see their chromosomes? It's just an interesting question. How visible are their chromosomes to you? No, you see the phenotype. You don't see their chromosomes. Well, 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 well sorry. I, 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 obviously, you don't literally see the chromosomes. But, okay, and let me not use the word phenotype because half the people who hear that word don't know what it means, and I'm an educator communicator. So I will say, you see the person who presents themselves to you. That's what you see in the world. And I did an experiment in the New York City subway. It was winter, so everyone has on a coat. And I looked at everybody from the neck up. Everybody's seated. And by the way, almost all of human height difference is in their legs, not in their torso. So when we're seated, we're all approximately the same height. That's why everyone could just sit at a big old dinner table and only the children need phone books to sit up. Everybody else doesn't have to adjust their chair their chair height, okay? So just a little fact. So everyone is about the same height, seated. And I asked myself, can I know who the boys are and who the girls are at a glance? And the answer was yes. And I got it 100% correct. On average, girls had longer hair. If they wore jewelry, there was more jewelry. The jewelry was more expressive. More earrings, more finger rings. Um, there... Facial hair was more likely to be tweezed. The eyebrows are trimmed. There's no hair between the eyebrows. Uh, any mustache hair was removed. They're more likely to wear makeup, especially around the eyes. Uh, mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow. They were more likely to wear uh, the red um, rouge. Rouge. No shit. This understanding of gender has been built into the beauty industrial complex. So, my only point was that if who you decide is male and female in the street is a construct of, of, of style and trends and 
what the beauty industrial complex wants you to see, if that's how we establish gender, then maybe some people want to be fluid within that gender. Identify. So they'll they'll wear a skirt, but maybe have a beard, or they'll I, mix and match that in whatever way Neil, you want. Sorry, hold on, sorry. hold on. I'm not. Wait, wait. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So okay, if a person using the tools of the beauty industrial complex wants to mix and match this, yeah, and they are expressing their freedom in a free country to do so. Mm. Why is your job to tell them not to? Okay. That's my only go. point. And so That's... I, I'm speaking of gender expression and the yes. freedom to do so. And, and, and if, you, if, you if, a, if you want to restrict that, then what country are you we living in? I have no idea how they didn't fall off their chairs laughing during that monologue. I mean, I had to edit it. It went longer than that. I mean, Francis kind of looks like he was struggling to hold it back, but he always looks like he's on the edge of a belly laugh, if I'm honest. Now, guys, I don't know too much about Neil. I mean, I actually met him a few years ago in Melbourne. He seemed like a good guy, good husband, good father, good astrophysics guy. But there is something else going on here and you can kind of see it through his body language. I mean, is this normal for him? Let me know in the comments. My first guess is that there's a little bit of Asperger's maybe going on here. I couldn't find anything concrete online to support that, but maybe there's something undiagnosed. My other theory is that this is a man who is so overwhelmingly in love with himself that he actually becomes sexually aroused by the sound of his own voice. Require. And monologues like this for him are like a climactic builder. But seriously guys, I'm so grateful that we have individuals like the progressive Oracle Neil that are just able to think more deeply than we are. You see, you and I are festering in our lowly, squalid existence, blissfully ignorant and unburdened by an overabundance of knowledge and wisdom. Whereas Neil is operating at a much higher frequency, a frequency that you and I could not dream of ascending to in this life or the next. I'm an educator communicator. So we rely on him to bear the weight of knowledge and wisdom on his shoulders and feed it down to us, trickle it down to us like a mother bird feeding her offspring. Similar to Plato's allegory of the cave, Neil has broken free from the hollow, boundless darkness and has experienced the torment but subsequent enlightenment of the sunshine on his face. And now he comes to us and he hands us the keys to our own shackles in the form of revealed wisdom. And it's up to us whether or not we break free. Just think about it. I mean, I feel stupid saying it now, but when I see people, I think man and woman just based on biology, but not Neil, he thinks deeper. He is able to observe the minutia, the hair, the clothing, the makeup, the jewelry, which highlights to me that the penis, the vagina, the breasts, and all of those other things concealed within the clothing actually don't matter after all. And now let's watch Constantine try and give some pushback. Yeah, Hold go on. ahead. So first of all, I don't know a single person, uh, and I've talked, we've talked to trans people on the show. We have trans employees at Trigonometry. Uh, we, we've spoken to all sorts of people about this issue. I do not know a single person who wants to prevent people from dressing how they want or behaving how they want or choosing any name that they want. However, well, the wait, problem okay. is... So, so you don't... But you know such people are out there. You I'm sure that. such people exist in the same way that there are people who you believe that, that okay. the earth is flat and so on, but yeah, they're okay. a tiny minority. The conversation in the public consciousness has become prominent not between people who want to defend the right of anyone to dress how they want and the people who want to prevent that. The reason the conversation has become an issue is that we assign and allow certain privileges to people based on their sex. If you are female, you get to go to places that only other females are in, like changing rooms and toilets and so on. If you are female, you get to compete only with people of your sex because females are at, at a disadvantage in physical competition to males in almost every sport. In other words, we carve out certain areas where your sex matters tremendously, even though we may respect your right everywhere else to believe that you are whatever you are, to dress however you are, etc. So your claim that today you woke up and put lipstick on and uh, grew your hair out long and tweezed out your moustache and whatever, and therefore you are female, 
has an impact on other people in certain contexts in which that is a problem. You and gave only two contexts. Guys, have. if you're enjoying my progressive take in this video, and if you also support progressive icons and oracles like Neil deGrasse Tyson and myself for that matter, who know what's best for you, then please don't forget to like the video because if you do that, then other unwashed peasants will also be able to watch the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you'd like to see daily updates of me telling you why your preconceived notions of sex and gender are pretty much all wrong and why men should be able to get in cage fights with women, then just hit that big red button. Do you have others? Sorry, I wasn't finished. And in, 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 in those contexts, it is essential, people would argue, to protect women from unfair competition and from various risks for which female-only spaces already exist. That's why people are having this conversation. Okay. It's not out of bigotry. But you have more than those two examples, and I'll address each of those in turn, but you have more than those two. Probably not. Okay, so, uh, so sports, let me address those two examples directly. I'll address them. Sports is very important. I, I, you said that. Female-only spaces. I remembered. So, yeah. um, so, but you don't seem to have a third example, so... And even if you do, we presume that would be a very distant third compared to those two cases. All right. the, no, there's a third one I can give you very easily. No, in this me, country, for politics, we have female-only shortlists for uh, positions in, in parliament. Uh, therefore, oh, I didn't if know you about claim that. That's that, interesting. Okay. Well, that's another example. I can give you more. So uh, female-only shortlists, there are certain targets within corporations for uh, diversity targets to have a certain number of women on the board. Therefore, when you make a claim that you are female, you are attempting, whether intentionally or not, to insert yourself into categories that are deliberately designed to protect women's interests. That is the concern that people have. So there's four examples for you there. Please address okay. them. Uh, personal uh, changing spaces, okay? Uh -huh. um, uh, that's a solvable problem, of course. Mm -hmm. And we basically have accomplished that here in Manhattan, where I live, uh, practically all bathrooms are either uh, multi-gender or, or it's solo bathrooms, so only one person at a time, mm -hmm. or you walk into a space and there's stalls that are closed off, but then you exit the stall and you come to a communal sink, okay? Yes. Yes. So it's a solvable problem where everyone has a private space rather than, uh, uh, for themselves, rather than having a gender private Space. How about prisons? That's another good example, something that's been rather problematic lately. What about all girls' schools? Regardless though, Neil tries to act like the two examples that Constantine gave are somehow trivial or unimportant. But I think there's something that's missing here with this whole gender neutral bathroom debacle. Whilst the whole world is arguing about women's spaces this and women's rights that, what about men's spaces? What about men's rights? You see, one of the great joys about being a man is the efficiency with which we use public toilets. It's that feeling when you're walking towards the toilet and you see the line for the women's toilet, which stretches further than the eye can see, and you just walk straight in, like you're walking on a cloud, unobstructed, unaffected by their salty glares. And so in you go, and not a word is spoken amongst you and your brethren, yet the line for the urinal works about as efficiently as a South Korean production line. And then, 45 seconds after you entered, you walk out with the swagger of a man walking onto his yacht. Being put in the same bathroom as females would be like farting in the face of my human rights. I know they'd be standing by the taps and looking in the mirror, putting their makeup on and talking while I'm waiting to wash my hands and just get out. You see, you ladies think we don't know what you're doing when you get up and always go to the toilet together? We're not stupid. We know you're making evil plans in there. Have you seen what Sally's wearing? Doesn't John look cute? He's really changed since he's gotten that new job. Should we have the tiramisu? I don't know if we should have the tiramisu. Do I look fat? If I look fat, we won't have it. Have the damn tiramisu, wash your hands, powder your nose, and move on. We don't want anything to do with your hellish, evil, time-wasting, line creating bathrooms everybody is so happy in the men's bathroom so we don't need guys like neil coming along and trying to ruin it for all of us and now let's watch the enlightened one tell us how we should completely redefine sports i mean this is the guy who's only worried about gender he's not worried about biology but then he wants to yeah i don't know see what you guys make of it second with sports very interesting um there's a case where a woman wanted to be disqualified they wanted to disqualify her from a an event, and she had very big muscles, and she had naturally high testosterone levels, okay? And she was genetically female, but uh, unusually high 
um, testosterone levels. And so that weirded everybody out. So I'm wondering whether the future of those sports is you don't contest gender with gender. You contest hormone ratios. Well, hold on a second. What, but what the, difference is physi the difference is physiologically between men and women are not just hormonal. Women have a different hip angle. They have different heart capacity. They have different lung capacity. I mean, there are profound physiological differences, different bone density. We've had okay, professional so then athletes we find, on the show so, to talk so about it. I don't have a problem with that. So then you find ways to slice the population so that whatever the event is, is is interestingly contested. So, for example, I wrestled in my life. Mm -hmm. I was captain of my high school wrestling team. Um, uh, I wasn't so good in college as I was in high school, but uh, that's when I finally wrestled, like, corn-fed folks from Iowa. <laughs> People who <laughs> hauled calves, you know, off yeah. the farm. Okay? So in wrestling, it would be unfair for me at 190 pounds, which is what I was back then, to wrestle someone 120 pounds. Hold on, it would actually be unfair for you to wrestle someone who is also 190 pounds, but female. But let me, let me work my way there. Let me just work my okay. way there. Because you're, Fine. you're, you're, you are, I respect the, how active your brain is, but I've thought about all this and just allow me to speak it at the rate that I do, okay? Go for it. So, so um, it would be unfair. So they have us in wrestling, they said, let's make weight categories, okay? So we make weight categories. So I don't wrestle the 120. I wrestle 190 pounder. So a wrestling match is not just this one person against the other person. It's 10 matches. And each one is intensely interesting because they are matched. Okay? So what the trans conversation is foisting upon us is the need to find ways to slice the athletic universe such that we still have interesting fair matches. And is it a combination of did you go through puberty um, uh, uh, as a male and then transition? Did you have puberty blockers? Um, what is your hormone level now uh, as you, if you want to compete? So it requires more creative thought. Rather than saying no to it all, Let's be creative about this as we were with wrestling, as we were, as we are with practically any other sport. In rowing, there's a heavyweight rowing and there's lightweight rowing. They don't compete against each other. Somebody came up with that to resolve the problem because more than one category of person wanted to compete. So I agree with you, it's an unsolved problem, yes, but it's not unsolvable given what we know about human physiology. So why not rise to that occasion and solve it rather than take your older view of the world and force modern emergent conduct of people to fit that? Okay, this makes sense now. You see, all along in my simple mind, I was thinking that this was a rather easy, simple equation, biological sex and weight categories. But now that the cosmic prophet Neil has come along and freed me from my cave dwelling ignorance, I can see that I was just simply not being creative and progressive enough. Perhaps I need to go and eat some mushrooms and sit in a field for a while. I mean, of course we should just separate sports by weight. I mean, duh, why didn't I think of that? Then we could have the FIFA World Cup and the Olympics and the UFC even separated along those categories. Did you like that? Yeah! So we could have 200 pound biological men who have medically lowered their testosterone competing against 200 pound biological women. I mean, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, if you're a bigot dinosaur, you might think something like, oh, men are physiologically stronger and they have higher levels of natural anabolic steroids, which helps them recover faster. And they have higher hemoglobin counts in their blood, which helps circulate oxygen around the body, stronger bone density, more muscle mass, thicker tendons, higher aerobic capacity, and they store less body fat and they run faster, they kick harder, they punch harder, they jump higher, and they basically excel in every single sport imaginable. <laughs> So that's clearly only because you are not progressive and creative like the messiah of the cosmos Neil is. The times are changing, buddy. Get with the program. And if you didn't already know by now how much of a sterile fossil you truly are, then Neil, the prognosticator, is about to let you know. Cyril deGrasse Tyson and all those who, um, who see, 
who see a world that can be rather than the world that is. And so that that's how I look at it. So yeah, it, we're in the middle of solving that problem now. Figure, let's figure it out together. I, I think uh, a lot of people would have an issue with what you're saying, Neil, is because they see women being denied opportunities. They see an unfair playing field, metaphorically and literally speaking. So fix the playing field, damn it. What, what, don't, don't say it's an unfair playing field, so all of a sudden the big issue is trans women taking the slot of a woman in an unfair playing field. Fix the playing field. And you know something? The day you fix that playing field, this conversation will look completely ridiculous. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So how do you fix the playing field? I'm curious. Well, that's hard. It's it's hard. We've been through it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that question. <laughs> well, I think it's I a, have, look. If you're advancing that as a solution, solution, I think I have a right to ask yeah. you. I, no, it's great. I don't have a fast solution, but things we have accomplished in the United States. Okay, uh, how long it took us to get a black president? I don't have a good solution, but what I do know is, let's go back to 1980s, late 80s. Um, American football. There was a quarterback, black. Uh, Douglas Johnson, I forgot his, Williams, Douglas Williams, who, black, the first black quarterback to start in our Super Bowl. Articles about this all over the place, okay? Can a black person, is a black person smart enough to take on such an important place because the quarterback calls all the plays? Not that they really do today because it comes from the sidelines, but th there was all these articles about it. Will he succeed in this place? And it's like, I'm thinking, what the fuck? Okay, because I'm getting a PhD in astrophysics and they're talking about whether black people are smart enough to be a quarterback on a football team, okay? Go back to that time and find those articles. They're baby steps sometimes, but to quote, um, there's a Unitarian minister in the early 1800s who spoke of the arc of progress. Uh, Martin Luther King would quote him in some of his speeches. Uh, the guy's name is in my book. Uh, he said... I, the summary of that quote is, um, I, I don't know how the arc of justice, the arc of, the, of progress bends. I know it bends, but which way does it bend? I'm pretty sure it bends towards, uh, is it progress? I, I, the, I'm it's sorry. the arc of yeah. history bends towards progress. Yeah, there's something like that. And that's a variation, not exactly the wording that's in the book. The book has it correct. All right. And so, so there it is. You just hope it doesn't regress so that we're living in yesterday's world rather than tomorrow's world. The arc of the moral universe is long, but bends towards justice. Martin Luther King paraphrasing Theodore Parker. So guys, just in case you missed it, the progressive Sybil here has just reminded us that we who, hitherto this video of course, believe that biological sex should determine the aforementioned matters are akin to the racial separatists of the 1950s. But guys, in all seriousness, as much as I do joke about this, it is actually an enormous red flag. When the scientific and academic elites try and play God because they have abandoned the idea of God for self-aggrandizement, this is when civilizations fall. He said he lives in Manhattan. This is the kind of person who rubs shoulders with the Manhattan elites, he's comfortable with his bougie lifestyle, he gets invited to all of the nice cocktail parties, and everywhere he goes he would be constantly received like the omniscient god of science and progressivism that he believes himself to be. So he will perform all kinds of mental gymnastics to try and maintain that status and that lifestyle. And can you blame him? If he came out tomorrow and he said, hey guys, sorry, but you know, biological sex kind of matters and men can't compete in women's sports because, you know, they have a gigantic advantage. And you can't just, you know, become a woman because chromosomes and gametes and all of that sort of stuff. He would be out of the club like that. The fickle Manhattan progressives would come for his throat. He wouldn't be invited on all of the TV shows anymore. He would not be held in the same sort of high esteem that he used to. He would be one of us, one of the unwashed. So there you have it guys, the fork in the road that we all encounter, but a fork in the road that is especially pronounced for those in the world of academia, of science, and of journalism. You can choose the road of truth and suffering, or you can choose the road of comforting lies. Your move. And with that, guys, I do hope that you will hit those links in the bio and check me out on all my other platforms. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Locals, Telegram, Spotify, Rumble. 
pretty much everywhere. And if you guys would like to subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already, it's going to be right here somewhere. If you'd like to watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.